Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem with absolute values. So we have the absolute value of z over z plus i and we're going to find the values of z or the set of z values such that this equation is true. So I'll be presenting two methods and I just want to warn you ahead of time that one of the methods will be a little painful and we might end up uh, making it incomplete for that reason okay so why tar torture ourselves but I still want to show you because mm, solving a problem in different methods or ways in my opinion is a really good enriching experience anyway some people don't like it well, let's just get it done in 30 seconds that's not the point anyways so set z equal to x plus yi and then plug it in here and here. So you're going to get x plus yi and then divided by x plus yi plus i. You're going to take the absolute value of the whole thing and set it equal to 1. Let's simplify the bottom a little bit by putting together the imaginary parts. It's going to be x plus the quantity y plus 1 multiplied by i. So we factor the i out and then this equal to 1. So when you have a complex number inside the absolute value, you want to find the absolute value, you probably want it in the simplest form, don't you? At least for the first method. Okay, bear with me. All right, great. So how do we write it in the simplest form? Well, simplest form is usually considered, like, think about it. How do you divide complex numbers, right? If you were given a problem like this, obviously you can't just do this, right? I mean, you can't divide a complex number into another one like long division because... How are you going to do this? Like 4 goes into 3 how many times? It's not going to work. It's different. Because when you divide two complex numbers, you get an other complex number. Right? So we could set it equal to A plus B I, which is the name of this channel, by the way. And then cross multiply and solve for A and B because you'll set up a system of equations. Right? But that's such a long method. And obviously you can use it here. That's going to be a third method, which I would never recommend. But if you want to torture yourself or you have plenty of time to waste... Sure, why not? But here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to multiply by the conjugates because that's what makes this simpler because that's going to turn the, the bottom or the denominator into a real number. That's the goal. Okay, make sense? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and focus on the denominator, please. And we're going to... I was trying to focus on denominator. I made a mistake. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. And since we're focusing on the denominator or the conjugate of the denominator, that's what it is, right? Great. And then we have to absolute value this, right? And set it equal to 1. Awesome. How do we work this out? The numerator is just going to be distribution, right? Let's go ahead and distribute. x times x is x squared. x times that is minus x, y plus 1i. And then yi and x, x will be xyi. And when you multiply yi by this, notice that i squared is going to give you negative 1. So the negative will be negated, which is going to give you a positive sign. Yay, y times y plus 1. And then the whole thing is divided by the denominator, which becomes the sum of two squares. Remember, when you multiply a plus bi, and if you are not familiar with this, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine lecture videos, I think. Uh, which is going over basics of complex numbers, including the absolute value and all that other stuff. And let me know if anything else uh, regarding complex numbers can be made. You know, just let me know. Anyways, uh, so the denominator becomes a sum of two squares, not difference because of the i. And now we have the absolute value of this and set equal to 1. You see, this is what I meant by this is going to get complicated. But don't worry, we're going to progress a little bit more and then see where that goes. Now, I kind of need to separate the real part from the imaginary part. So let's go ahead and put these two guys together. And if you want, you can go ahead and actually expand everything. So this is going to become x squared plus y squared plus y. And of course, that'll be divided by the denominator. So we're going to split it up into two fractions so that we can absolute value easily. And then the imaginary part is going to be xy minus if you distribute that, you're going to get x minus xy minus x. Since the whole thing is uh, the coefficient of y, I can just distribute the minus sign, right? And then divide it by x squared plus y plus 1 squared again. 
I could also distribute the denominator, but that's probably for the next step. And now I can find the absolute value of this beast, right? How do you do that? Well, you kind of take the real part. Let's call this A and let's call this B. And then that's going to be A plus BI. And the absolute value of A plus BI is the square root of A squared plus B squared. And by the way, this is uh, A plus BI times A minus BI inside the radical. In other words, if you multiply a complex number and it's conjugate, and square root it, you get the absolute value. Or if you square both sides, you'll get something else. Anyways, so this is going to be the square root of something big, like this, right? And then I'm going to write the bottom. And again, at some point, you could expand it, right? The denominator. And then the other guy is going to be squared as well. So it's going to look like this. How nice, right? And then we're going to square this. Add them up and square root it, and that's going to equal 1, which means the expression inside the radical will be 1. Obviously, how, you, how do you square something like this? You can go ahead and square this, right? And then add this squared. Each has three terms. And then divide it by the common denominator, and you can expand it later if you want. And since I already took squares on both sides, this is going to equal that. And again, this messy, a very messy expression can be simplified by expanding everything like, okay, this is going to give you x to the fourth, and then y to the fourth, and then y squared, and then 2x squared y squared, plus 2x squared y, plus 2y cubed, and then plus x squared y squared, so on and so forth. You see how painful this can get, but eventually this should somehow simplify. But if you really wanted to see a simple, simple, simpler version of this, then we need to proceed with the second method. Let's go ahead and do that because it's not going to take that long. But why did I torture you with the first method? Because I always tell my students, or I always, I always told my students when I was teaching full time, that no pain, no gain. I know it's a cliche, but it works. Okay. So work your brain muscles. Now, second method is super duper nice. That's why it's the second method. And forgive me for that. Now, this absolute value thing has a really special rule. If you have the absolute value of a quotient, and the proof is fairly easy. <laughs> well, this is kind of going to be a proof if you complete that problem. But sort of. Uh, you can separate them. Great. Like, why didn't you tell us earlier, right? Because then it will spoil the surprise. So we can kind of separate these into two absolute values and then cross multiply like crazy. Yay. And this is just awesome. This is the beauty of math. Sometimes you take an alternative route and the things get a lot, a lot simpler. Imagine Fermat's last theorem was proven and the proof is about 90 pages, right? Andrew Wiles took 20 something years. It was a crazy proof. I don't, I mean, I don't think I could even understand the first page of it. But anyways, if you study elliptic curves, maybe you'll get an idea. The thing is, quite complicated. Imagine like 10, 20, 15 years later, somebody proves Fermat's last theorem and it only takes like five pages. Imagine how cool that will be. Maybe one of you guys will do that, right? Okay. Give me a little bit of credit if you do that one day. Anyway, so if Z is X plus Y, I, I apologize because the channel's name is A plus BI, but we can do this because this is a locus problem. Okay. So focus on this locus problem. This is going to be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then this is going to be the square root of x squared plus y plus 1 squared. Remember that came up before. And now if you square both sides, something mathematical happens. Guess what that is? x squared disappears. Great. Awesome. That's what is so great about the second method that not only that, but more terms will disappear. And actually y squared also disappears. No more squares. Okay. Go away. This becomes a 0 and y becomes negative 1 half. Wait a minute. What is that supposed to mean? What happened to x? It just evaporated. Okay, this means that all the complex numbers that satisfy our very equation are going to be lie on a horizontal line because they have imaginary part neg negative 1 half. This kind of looks like the Riemann's hypothesis, but that's the real part, right? Anyways, we kind of flipped it. Uh, by the way, I didn't mean to, but hopefully, uh, anyways, I don't know. I just stopped talking about this, negative one half, because I'll, I'll like, I'm not going to be able to stop. And this basically gives us all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.